Creating a Murren stack application from beginning to end can be a lot of hard work, and you don't want to do all this hard work without having some sort of decent plan in place. Otherwise, you can get discouraged by your own code, you can just aimlessly code in the wrong direction, and may not actually know what the finished product is you're looking for. So with all that being said, I've done a lot of videos that are one-off videos, for example, learning how to authenticate with Firebase, or creating a RESTful API, or creating a basic React tutorial. What I want to do here is I want to throw everything together and show you how to create a Mern stack application from beginning to end, which means I'm going to be using Mongo, Express, React, and Node.js, and I'm also going to be using TypeScript instead of just vanilla JavaScript. And the reason that we're using TypeScript is so we make everything type safe and we have our definitions clear for what we want our objects, our interfaces, our classes, everything to look like. As far as what kind of application I'm going to be creating, I'm going to make a simple website that allows you to post blogs, or for that matter, allows anybody who's logged in to post a blog. It's not going to get too crazy or creative. It's just going to be simple enough and have diverse enough libraries that you'll get a little bit of everything you need to learn in order to create one of these for yourself. So you don't actually have to do a blogging application. You can do something different once you've watched these tutorials, but I hope that this provides you with a good foundation to create your own Mernstack application. So let's take a look at this diagram right here. So you can see here, I have a user and the user interacts with the front end UI. That being said, the front end UI and the RESTful API both interact with the authentication service that we're gonna be using. And in this case, that's gonna be Firebase. The reason that I'm using Firebase is because they have a really, really strong uh, Node.js library that already has TypeScript definitions in it for us, so it makes it extremely easy to use. And it's just so easy to log into a web page when you click login or sign up with Google, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whichever one you want to use. In this scenario, we're just going to be using Google to keep things simple. We're going to have a RESTful API that communicates with a MongoDB. And inside the MongoDB is we're going to be saving some basic user inter user information, and we're gonna be saving some information about the blogs that we create. Maybe in a future episode, we might be able to expand on that, but we're gonna do a user and blog model to keep everything simple for now. That pretty much sums up what this application is gonna look like. I thought drawing it out for you in a diagram would help you understand a little bit more if you're new to this kind of stuff. So now that we have a basic understanding of what we're gonna be doing, let's go ahead and go over to the Firebase console. I already have the window open here. I'm going to click add project. I'm going to enter a name for my project. I'm just going to call it blog. I'm just going to disable the Google analytics for now, and then I'm going to let it go ahead and create the project. Then it should say your new project is ready. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I'm going to go over to authentication and I'm going to click this get started button. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Google and I'm going to enable this. That way we can sign in with Google. I'm just gonna give it my default email for now. You can give it a different one if you like. Once that's enabled, the next thing we have to do is actually create a web app application for this project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to project settings. Then we're gonna to go to general and you should see a tab that says there are no apps in your project. Go down there and click the little chevrons with the forward slash and register a new application. Once you've done this, we can take a look at the settings we're gonna need for our React project. Now you're gonna see this add Firebase SDK to your project. That Firebase config object is what we're gonna need. So maybe keep that page open or if you close that, it's gonna be available for you down here. Also, if you take a look at the service accounts tab, we're gonna end up coming in here for the server side because we're gonna need this for the Firebase admin, but we're not gonna take care of this quite yet. Next, let's go ahead and log into our Mongo Atlas. Mongo Atlas is what I'm using to host my MongoDB. If you're using localhost or you have one running somewhere else, that's totally fine, but I'm just gonna be setting up a free cluster for myself here. And I have another video for you that actually shows you how to do this. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click build a cluster here. And then I'm gonna click the free tier. 
I'm going to choose a region, a provider, and I'm just going to go ahead and create cluster. And then it should be provisioning the cluster for us. So you'll see there's two tabs on the left, database access and network access. You're going to have to make sure that your IP is whitelisted in the network access, and you're going to have to create a user inside of the database access to make sure that you can access with admin privileges any of your databases. If you're using Mongo Atlas's free tier system, you'll only have access to one free database. So inside of network access, when you go ahead and add an IP address, if you have a static IP address, just enter your IP address with a forward slash 32 at the end, meaning that all 32 segments of this IP address are always going to be the same. But if you have a dynamic IP address, for example, your internet provider sometimes changes the last three or last six digits of your IP address on you. If you enter a zero for one of the sections, for example, like I have here, what you can actually do is leave one of the sections as a zero and then do a forward slash 24, which means that the first three sections here will always be the same, but I know my last three digits of my IP is always changing. So this is how you enter an IP range. And then in my database access, I'm just gonna make sure I have a user. I'll just put something like super user or then my super secret password or something like that. If you wanna get more details, I do have a video that deals specifically with Mongo. So I'll just link that in the description below. But once you have the Firebase and the Mongo all set up, we have all the provisional elements we're gonna need in order to create this blog. So last but not least, I wanna take a look at this start bootstrap log. And they have a, um, they have a clean blog template here. And I really, really like the theming of this. They have this nice background photo that they got from, I believe it's Unsplash, like a nice stock photo, uh, a very clean layout. I'm going to use this as my inspiration for my design. I'm going to be using Bootstrap. I'm not going to copy this template exactly, but I'm going to take some elements from it that I really, really like. And as we design it in the, in the videos to come, you're going to see it all come together nicely. Okay, guys, that's the introduction. That's everything we need to get started. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at actually setting up the server and client sites.